Good morning and welcome to our video for sixth grade for Monday, May the 18th. This is going to be our second to last lesson of the school year. So I'm very excited. I hope you are too. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at what we're working with. And so one caveat as we start this lesson, if you have your own sets of data, um, especially if you are someone that is not one of my students, um, take a lot of this with a uh, first two pages with a grain of salt because if you did your own activity and you have different results than what I have then there may be some differences for some of the things some of the things will hold true and we will talk about those so um, here would be the values that I went ahead and wrote down uh, that I'm going to factor in for everything so if you need to pause the video at any point so you can go ahead and get caught up with that please by all means do so um, I'm not going to take the time to to read this to you. Um, my statistical question would be, what is the mean? Uh, we are going to answer that on the next page, but this is, would be the answer for that. And so uh, to start with, what we would do is go ahead and represent our data either in a dot plot or a histogram. I chose to do both. So you're going to see the dot plot on this page as I move to the top of the next page. Uh, we are going to see the histogram that I did. And so they're both going to be kind of similar, but we could say different things uh, for each of them. How will you label your graph? Now, uh, for the dot plot, it makes perfect sense to go ahead and represent every single thing. If we're making a histogram, then we are not going to do that because if we give every single value, we don't technically have a histogram. We just have a bar graph. And so um, the range being included in there uh, is what makes it a histogram uh, more than a bar graph. So let's go ahead and take a look at these. So are there any clusters? Um, not really. I don't have any gaps in my data. And so because there are not any gaps, I don't really have a cluster um, unless you want to say that every single thing is clustered together. Are there peaks in the data? Yes. So uh, if I'm looking at this, my peak would be for my number of people that have one and two pets. If I scroll back down here real quick, my peak would be for one, and then two would be just a little bit lower than that. They're going to ask about symmetry. I sort of have symmetry with this. You could kind of say that that exists because both of these kind of middle points um, are higher, and then we go up and then go back down. Um, I have more symmetry in this uh, than I would for the other. The next thing they want us to do is find the mean, the median, and the most. My uh, center between my 10th and 11th data point is right here. I would take the average of both of these and that's going to give me a median of one. And my mode, my most frequently repeated number, would be one, and we talked about that already. So here is um, an example of using a box plot. This would be a time that I would not want to try to use a box plot to represent my data. And if you are looking at the one that I have on the screen, you're like, wait, where's the part in the middle? That is the reason why. So because my lower quartile and my median are the exact same number, I lose that third reference point in the middle where the median would go that lets me distinguish between the lower quartile, the median, and the upper quartile. And so there's some uh, kind of ambiguity there with the way it looks because I lose out on a third reference point. It does great for showing our total range, which we could go ahead and calculate as being four. Our interquartile range, again, really easy to calculate, but we lose that measure where the center actually should be, if it's actually here or here. What measure of center do you think best describes the data? Well, if we look, and two of the three numbers are the same, but I do have enough people that have more than one pet that I think the mean would be better for representing our center. Uh, if you are doing your own set of numbers, you may have something completely different. Uh, that works. Uh, does the interquartile range or the range uh, best describe the data? I would suggest probably the interquartile range because it again we're more compact and so number four the answer to the statistical question 1.5 pets. So let's go ahead and take a look at our share and show questions. What statistical question could we ask? We could ask for any of the following things. We can ask for the mean, we can ask for the median, and we could ask for the mode. And we could ask for 
that in different ways. So for the mode, we could say um, which age group was most frequently represented at the food court. We could kind of add, add the ask the median and the mean kind of a similar way. We could ask for kind of what the average age of person at the food court might be. And so we could possibly find that by doing the mean or the median. Um, any peaks or gaps, we do have a peak here. We kind of sort of have a peak here. We have a definite gap. Uh, no one representing 51 to 60 years old. Does the graph have symmetry? Sort of. I would accept the argument that there is symmetry in this part, but not the entire graph. So number four, they want us to find the interquartile range using the lower quartile of 16 and a half and an upper of 51 and a half. So that will give us an interquartile range of 35. And so is that going to be a better representation of the data than the range? I would argue for the interquartile range being better on the basis of the fact that we have a gap here and that we have this kind of spike from 61 to 70 years old. But most of our data is going to fall within a range that would more or less fit within about uh, 35 years of each other. Um, so if we're kind of focusing on this range here, uh, that would accurately represent it, I believe. Now, if your purpose is to show how spread out the data is or how spread out the, the ages are in the food court, then the range would be a much better option because that shows that we have people all the way from one year old up to 70 years old. So depending on what your purpose is, could influence how you choose to represent that. So again, I would argue that either one of those could potentially work depending on how you want to explain it. Number five, the mode of the data is 16 years old. Is the mode a good description of the center of the data? Absolutely not. So the reason being is that it's the most frequently repeated number in something that's actually the third highest, inside the third highest range. And so that's not a good representation of our average age. I don't think we would ever want to try to use the mode unless it is involved in a overwhelming peak in our data uh, graph. So now let's take a look at our homework problem. So uh, for number two, we want to describe the peaks. Again, you can kind of gather that from looking at the graph, describe any gaps. Hopefully nobody puts anything for that because there are no uh, values of zero for this. Does the graph have symmetry? Again, it's not going to be symmetrical throughout the entire graph. So number five, describe the data. So we want to talk about four different things. So we are going to describe it based on having clusters, gaps, peaks, and symmetry, as well as we could say uh, what the mode would be, uh, which again is going to represent the peak if there might be a median, what the range or possible interquartile range could be for that. Um, and for number six, how could we graph that to uh, understand the distribution of the data? Again, we could have two different options, one being a histogram, one being a box plot. And so there could be benefits or detractors for both of those. Number one on the back, we are looking for the median age. So this one will be mercifully easy after some of the other things that we've talked about. Just put the numbers in order, find where your uh, center point is gonna be between your fourth and fifth uh, data values. Uh, the median for the dot plot, again, we're kind of working with the same thing. The trick is you may want to write out all of these values, or you can figure out how many values you have and start counting this direction until you get to where the center would be uh, to solve that. Uh, number three, uh, the gap, you're going to be looking for a specific range uh, between this number and this number. Um, the peak is going to be a specific point. Number five, so again, uh, this goes back to our last lesson where we're looking at two different teams that had a similar variation, so we're looking at the range and then had a different number of points per game. And so uh, what we're looking for is like the most drastic difference. And then finally, number six, uh, you get to choose and uh, say which measure of center best represents the data. So uh, we don't have a mode for this, so that leaves you with two different options. So 
take a look at both of those options and see which one best represents the most of our data points possible. So that concludes this lesson for today. Our homework video will be coming out on Tuesday. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out in Google Classroom or reach out to your classroom teacher. Uh, have a wonderful day and I will see you tomorrow.